Time now for your forewarn weather with Cedric Haynes. All right, so we had the rain, we had the snow, and we've got the photos to show, to a, prove it, don't a we? A little bit of everything, yeah. Cedric. Yes, we call that a mixed bag of precipitation. You go in your bag, you know, see what you can find today. You remember Barney, he used to have that with the bag, right? But anyway, I'll tell you what, we did have a mixed bag across most of the Beehive State. Here's Peggy Sorison showing us from Woodland Hills, had about five, six inches of snow there. And notice the context of the snow. This is a heavy, wet snow. So this is the kind that you want to get out there, shovel, and remove fairly quickly. You don't want let it freeze and get even heavier and you can see how the tree limbs are kind of weighed down by some of this wet snow there's a lot of moisture content in this snow and i showed this earlier but you can see from janine here this is our skeleton you know it became a skeleton because it was sitting out there for like the whole fall and late uh summertime and saying Man, is it ever going to cool down across the Beehive State? Well, it became a skeleton before it did, but it did cool down eventually, and now it has snow sitting all on top of it. So the skeleton is out there shivering in the snow. All right, take a look at some of these snow totals. The big winner, big surprise winner, Cedar City with over six inches of snow. That's a half a foot. How about that? Heber City had about six inches. Alta, six inches of snow over towards Parowan Beach. We had uh, 4.1, and uh, Silver Lake, Brighton, had about four inches of snow as well. Oak City, look at that, three and a half inches of snow there. Panguage over an inch and a half. Even Manti picking up an inch of snow from this system. And it wasn't just the snow. Again, if you didn't see the snow, you saw a lot of liquid precipitation come down. Over an inch and a half in Holiday, over 1.3 in Tooele. Magna had 1.3. That's a rain. We needed that, right? Manti had over 1.2 inches of liquid there, and Price 1.25 as well. You look over towards Payson, over an inch of uh, liquid. Same thing in Bountiful. Providence almost of to an inch, and notice there over even at the University of Utah, almost an inch there, and uh, over half an inch there, even in a hurricane. So some good rain and a nice sunset this evening. Scott Taylor over Magna, you can see clouds, clear sky, some of the sun, they're setting behind the horizon. And if you look closely, the white on top of the mountains, they're showcasing that snow cover there on the top peaks. It's chilly out there as well. Temperatures in the 40s, 30s, and low 50s down towards the south, but even there, that's pretty chilly. Here's a shot from earlier today from Scott Taylor showing us over Salt Lake Valley, and you can see some of these clouds that are building up on top of the mountain peaks. We're watching that because ten the, the tendency is that the cold air builds up on the top peaks of the mountains, and you get those clouds that build up, but it is also an indication that eventually some of that cold air will rush down the canyons and down the side of the mountains into the valleys, warming up and spreading out, and that's when we get those gusty, downsloping winds. So we do have high wind warnings in effect for lower Washington counties and then also up here as we get towards the northern portion of the Wasatch Mountains there from Bountiful over towards Ogden we've got a high wind warning winds could gust up to 60 miles per hour late tonight and even in the Salt Lake Valley we could see winds gusting 30 to 50 miles per hour by tomorrow morning so keep that in mind early on in the day as that low pressure kind of rotates to our south and east, spinning those easterly winds back down into the valley. But any precipitation is going to be confined this weekend to the southeastern part of the state. You'll have a couple of scattered showers from time to time across the southeastern half of the state. But for the most part, we're going to primarily be drying out as we go throughout the rest of this evening. And as we head into the beginning of next week, we start the week off on a dry note as well. Hey, if you didn't get to the football game tonight, maybe you want to head out to the Utes game coming up tomorrow evening. Should be a little better. Temperatures falling from the 50s into the 40s, but mostly clear skies expected out there. As we lose the influence of this Canadian trough with this cold air in places, this low pressure cuts off and moves away, and we get seasonal temperatures heading into next week. Until we get to the end of the week, then we've got a southwesterly warm flow ahead of our next storm system that could bring us some cooler air by the time we get towards the end of next weekend. But between now and then, yeah, we've got improving conditions. Upper 60s tomorrow, a little cool out there with a few extra clouds, but then 70s and 80s in St. George. Along the Wasatch Front, we go from the 50s, 60s to the 70s again. So, hey, hey it's cold tonight, <laughs> but tomorrow, hey, it's a different story. Different story. It's warmer, though, when your team's winning, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's yes. always good. It's mm -hmm. cold in Provo. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's all I'm saying. Hey, uh-oh. <laughs>